we just take a moment yeah. to like, I'm mm -hmm. still reeling from that sentence. Hi, and welcome to season two of Heritage Choir. My name is Natalia Romero Velaez, and I'm really excited to kick off the season with one of our four incredible organizations. This organization is called Casa Sol, a living and learning community from the U of M. And today we're gonna get a chance to speak with Dr. Fernie, um, the leader, the director of this organization, and we're going to get to hear from three students sharing a little bit about their experience. Each of these students was asked to answer a question. How does your heritage and culture drive and motivate you? Their answers are thoughtful, reflective, and moving, and you'll hear them speaking throughout this interview. Without further ado, I present to you Dr. Fernie and Casa Sol. Hi, my name is Diane Acosta and I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a student from the University of Minnesota. And one thing that drives me in my culture or my heritage is a sense of community. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today without their support. Um, I wouldn't think about, you know, the way I want to help them as much as they have helped me. Um, I have a more sense of responsibility for communities other than my own. My community is special because we all share similar identities, we share the same struggles, we share um, the same systems that help us succeed or tear us um, down and, you know, oppress us, but I think together we are stronger and the community is one of the most important things I think I've learned um, about my heritage and culture that um, really drives me to be the person I want to be and the person I am today. Bueno, primeramente, muchas gracias. I appreciate the invitation uh, to talk about Casa Sol. Uh, my name is Fernando Rodriguez Jr. Um, I use both Fernando and Fernie, uh, but a lot of students and uh, colleagues call me Dr. Fernie. I, um, I should first say I'm a first generation Mexican American gay kid from the border. Uh, that's an important uh, piece of myself to acknowledge as I uh, work as the director of the Multicultural Center for Academic Excellence at the University of Minnesota. Uh, my role with uh, MK, uh, for short, is really to lead the vision, uh, support the full-time team, and also ensure that students on campus, uh, which, as we know, is a predominantly white campus, have the support that they're going to need to be academically successful at the university. So in short, I get to work with talented first generation students and students of color at the University of Minnesota on a variety of initiatives. And one of those initiatives, uh, which is special to my heart, is Casa Sol. So that's a little bit about me. So yeah. what is Casa Sol, especially in the context yeah. of the greater program? Casa Sol is a residential community that is housed on campus in one of the residential buildings. And it is intended to be a space for Latinx students uh, of Latin background, right? To live in community with each other, uh, to build uh, relationships one-on-one, -on -one, but also as a community, engage with our partners over in the Chicano Studies Department on campus, and to be a uh, source of uh, empowerment really for our students uh, on campus. And so I think what it adds to MK and our vision and our overall plan is understanding that communities of color within a predominantly white organization like the University of Minnesota have what I call these pockets of support where they don't need to worry about being the only one, right? Uh, the only person of color in a white classroom or the only uh, Latino or Latina in a uh, small group project or to have to feel the, what I also call the hypervigilance of what it means to be racialized, right? Within uh, a space like the University of Minnesota where they can come home at the end of a day where what they have likely um, engaged with white faculty, white staff, white peers, racial microaggressions, maybe assumptions, uh, but also have been resilient through the day, right? And come home to Casa Sol to be in community and just unwind from what can be um, a really intense college process. Hi everyone, my name is Carolina Mendez. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I currently work at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. 
My role is I'm the Multicultural Recruitment Coordinator in the Office of Admissions. And so um, I want to talk to you a little bit about how my heritage influences the daily work that I do. So um, a little background about myself. I'm originally from Ecuador. I was born and raised there. And so I was able to experience the education system in my home country of Ecuador and um, also here in the state of Minnesota. So um, through my role, I'm able to help students um, apply to colleges. I'm able to explain the process. I do speak Spanish, soy bilingue, and so I'm able to also help Spanish speaking families through this college application process. And so um, part of my role and the reason why I continue to work in admissions is because of my own personal experience that I had when I was applying to colleges and how I didn't really interact with any admissions offices um, and I didn't really know what I should be asking because I was a first generation student and neither did my family. And so um, it can be really overwhelming when there are so many different colleges to apply for. And so through my role, I'm able to make sure I'm giving families information and even things that um, I try to think, you know, like, what was I missing? What did I, what should I have known as far as like scholarships or, you know, what do loans mean? Um, and then also like, as far as tuition and fees, room and board, like how much am I really paying for college? All of those questions I'm able to answer and help families through it. And so um, a big part of that is just the value of education that my family instilled in me um, because they weren't able to obtain an education the way that I was. And so I'm able to take full advantage of that here and um, be able to pursue education in, in, in the right way. Tell me more about your students. Who, what are oh. your students like? What, you know, tell me more about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, first let me just say in general, as the director of MK, our students broadly are phenomenal. Um, I don't, this is not an understatement, an overstatement when I say uh, they have been my driving motivation and force to really be the best leader that I can be in this role, right? Um, what I can tell you about the Casa Sol students uh, and also acknowledging that my face-to-face -face interaction with them has been limited as a result of, you know, the COVID pandemic and being in this virtual space, but I had the privilege to hang out with a few of them a few weeks ago. Uh, we were on campus, did the socially distanced small group gathering and shared uh, some sandwiches, right? Um, and what I drew from that conversation is, and I want to expand on this, they're just so incredibly thoughtful and reflective, right? Um, I asked uh, something along the lines of, you know, um, what has been the most exciting part of your experience or what has been the most challenging piece? And as they each responded to that, it was clear the depth of the reflection that they have had in the middle of this unbelievable crisis that is uh, not only our political context in which we are just now beginning to recover from, but also the global pandemic, uh, also the, uh, the aftermath of what has happened with George Floyd, right? And so these students, these Casa Sol students um, said things somewhere along the lines of it has been um, centering, Right. It has been uh, the use of the word more intentional in terms of their connections. Right. They can't just go to big gatherings. They have to be really thoughtful about how they're going to engage. But the biggest thing that I think screamed out for me is the their resilience. Right. Really uh, being in this moment in their first year of college, I can imagine. Right. Their first year of college, a global pandemic, an unbelievable political scene, you know, the uproar in the Twin Cities um, with uh, the murder of George Floyd. It's a lot. Right. Um, and I told them, you know, you all are having reflections and realizations that I at 38 am just now coming to. And so just think of how much more um, wisdom and uh, humility I think this moment brings. Um, so that, those are all of the things that I can say about the students um, based off of my, my, uh, my quick connection with them that, that Friday night. They are phenomenal. Hola a todos. My name is Jesus Encarnacion. I'm a current junior at the University of Minnesota, and I'm studying Spanish, Portuguese, French, and linguistics. My Mexican heritage has impacted me because growing up, I've always been exposed to both English and Spanish. 
even though I did live in a bilingual household, um, unfortunately for me, I always resorted to English before Spanish, just because that's the predominant language. So I've always had to kind of switch back and forth on which language I could speak and when I could speak it and with who I could speak it. However, once I did come to the University of Minnesota, I was connected with other Hispanic and Latino students through Casa Sol, which is a first year living learning community. Our shared heritage allowed us to connect with one another, even though we were such a diverse group of people um, with many different backgrounds. Um, nevertheless, we all had that same connection, which was our Latin and Hispanic cultures and roots. This made the process of coming to college so much easier because it was something new and different for all of us. We were all doing it together as a community. So I was able to learn and grow from that experience as a university student. Um, so much that I was able to further continue my studies and I even picked up two languages along the way. So my heritage motivates me to better my Spanish speaking abilities so that I can connect with my own roots and my own origins. Um, my studies and cultural background at the University of Minnesota just really reaffirmed my belief that what I am currently studying and what I'm doing is what I'm passionate about in life. And honestly, I can't wait to continue on with my higher education and continue to teach the language and culture that I was raised up with. Um, evidently, it's so important to me that I have to continue teaching it and learning it so that my heritage is not forgotten. When we spoke about Casa Sol, you mentioned the impact mm. COVID-19 had had on your students, mm. especially yeah. as they navigated intersections of identity, race, mm -hmm. culture, yeah. starting yeah. college, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What does Casa Sol look like now? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, first, I think it is important to just acknowledge that we are all really kind of struggling. Right. Um, I know that, you know, I've been working from home for a year now. And let me just say I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to still uh, have the opportunity to do this work in such a remarkable moment. Um, I would say um, that the global pandemic for all uh, incoming first year students has been a total uh, kind of de destruction of what the ideal college experience is supposed to be, right? You're supposed to live on campus. You're supposed to be able to go into the spaces, be in class at minimum, be able to have people over in your residence hall, right? And all of that has been stripped away, right? But I think it, it is also important that when it comes to multicultural students in general, that ideal college experience is already not realistic, right? Because they're going to go into a space where they are going to be minoritized, right, uh, racialized, right? And nobody talks about that part, right? Because we know that majority students don't necessarily have to navigate the cultural and racial tensions that multicultural students do, hmm. right? So going into this year and knowing the importance of spaces like Casa Sol, right, we knew that it was going to be a remarkable uh, challenge to stay connected and to be engaged and to ensure that students were having the experience that I wanted them to have. So it, it has been difficult, right? And Casa Sol currently is a smaller community, small but mighty community, right? We had students, um, you know, not commit to live on campus as a result of the pandemic. It makes sense. It's a financially uh, smart, right, move. Um, and that has also implications for the program, right? So currently, uh, Casa Sol welcomes students who are not living in the residence hall, which I think is an awesome opportunity, right? And also students who are living in the residence hall. And so we have this really interesting dynamic, and I really truly mean interesting, <laughs> interesting <laughs> dynamic. <laughs> I really truly mean interesting in that we are up in this Zoom virtual world with both students who are living at home right, who are um, living off campus and also students who are in the community on campus, right? So the opportunity to, uh, one, I think, maintain students connected to one central place that is still connected to campus is critical, right? Especially for students who are not living on campus. 
But the other piece is, uh, and I know this because the students were able to share it with me when we met, is the students are connecting individually, right? They're building those more, and arguably, I would say, more intimate relationships because they are now needing to, who, to decide who they invest their time with. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll share, you know, one of the comments that was shared with me in a one on one context, right, was uh, I asked the question, right, what is the biggest lesson that the pandemic has taught you? And let me tell you what the student said, right, that I like myself. Mm -hmm. And that I don't need to have all of these superficial friendships that are really about nothing, but that I feel pressure to like hang out with these people. And so now I'm able to truly understand, these are my words now I'm rephrasing, truly understand who I want to invest and spend that time with. Because we know clicking a Zoom link in the middle of like, that's, that's a commitment, right? So it's things like that, right? That although um, I'll acknowledge that um, I wish the Casa Sol students and all of our living learning community students were having that traditional full on-campus experience where they're able to you know, interact and engage. But our current reality, I think, has allowed for a very different kind of engagement that I, I believe is gonna prove uh, to develop long-term friendships that these students are going to have for a lifetime. And that I think is a big win this year um, in this unbelievable pandemic. Can we just take a moment yeah. to like, I'm mm -hmm. still reeling from that sentence. Mm, just what a, what yeah. an amazing Oh, discovery. it stopped me dead in my track. Yeah, it stopped me dead in my tracks. Oh, it stopped man. me dead in my tracks, yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, these things I, took me to 38 to realize, right? And so I remind students that as, um, as tough as it is, right, this pandemic experience and everything else that's happened within it is truly giving us lessons, mm -hmm. right? And it's true, if we allow this moment to teach us, I th and that's what these students are doing. They are allowing this moment to teach them about themselves, about each other, about politics, about the world. Um, and, I, and that's what gives me hope in the next generation. You know, like that's, that's awesome. So is Casa Sol then really just for first year students or is it a four year mm. or more commitment for students? You know, that is a great question. Um, and I'm gonna answer it uh, both in the present and also in what I hope to build as the director of MK, right? Currently, uh, we are considering all first year students uh, eligible to be a part of the program, right? It truly is intended to be a first year student experience. However, in order to, uh, to increase access, we also have welcomed transfer students, right, who are in their first year at the University of Minnesota, which is important. Um, and then also, we have also opened access to students to, who, are, who are both on and off campus which is another, another thing that is uh, unique, I think, about our living learning communities is that, yes, the living component is a critical part of the experience, and it does not eliminate you from being a part of the community, right? Because we do um, and will do a number of events and, uh, and, and things like that. Right now, the Casa Sol experience truly ends after the first year, right? Mm -hmm. um, all of our living learning communities are first year experiences, however, Right as we build our second year initiatives, our third year initiatives, et cetera, one of the things that we will intentionally build with this year, starting with this year's Casa Sol students, is an intentional connection to Casa Sol alum, right? So that second year students can come back to the community, hopefully formalize a mentorship program with the community, and so building out right our opportunities for third year students and also senior students or fourth year students, sorry. Uh, but the other piece is Casa Sol is not the only opportunity to engage with MK, right? We are developing a series of second year internships that are going to be the highest paid on campus, that are going to be research based and also um, uh, leadership development based. So students will be ready to consider graduate school if they want, right, in their second year, right? And we're just now envisioning what our third year um, continued experience for Casa Sol students and all really uh, students who connect with MK can, uh, can access. So I'm excited, right, uh, about not only uh, making the next year Casa Sol better and the next one better, but also to continue to learn and build the leaders that are coming out of those communities uh, and get them connected to other opportunities as well. But always maintaining a connection to Casa Sol Right, because I think it's important that uh, young leaders. I know it was important for me to see 
uh, their peers succeed and graduate and go to graduate school and continue to give back. It really sounds like you have the living part down, but you're expanding mm -hmm. the learning so that the learning yes. continues yes. throughout the thread mm -hmm. of a student's career at the yes. U. Mm -hmm. So if a yeah. student is yeah. interested in learning more about Casa Sol, where can they find mm -hmm. out more? Yeah, so um, on our website or shoot me an email, you know, um, mk at umn.edu, mcae at umn.edu. Yeah, mcae at umn.edu. We've had a chance to hear from some of the students involved in Casa Sol. We've yeah. heard from you about what Casa mm -hmm. Sol is, but I want to know about you. And as I've mentioned, mm. Border Crossing is a community um, of musicians who is inter yeah. who are interested in uplifting, you know, the music of those around us, but especially mm -hmm. of underrepresented communities. So my mm -hmm. question for mm -hmm. you is, if you had a song that you had to pick that represented <laughs> maybe an important event in your life or that had a yeah, special yeah, yeah. meaning for you, what mm -hmm. would that song be? Yeah, um, Burbujas de Amor um, from Juan Luis Guerra. That would have to be the song. Uh, Burbujas de Amor truly reminds me of my childhood, right? Um, and I remember hearing the song and for some context, every about Saturday morning, uh, there was a cartoon that was the Little Mermaid, the Little Mermaid cartoon, but it would happen in Spanish. And at the end of each of the cartoon episodes, they would, you know, do all of the credits and this song was playing in the background. Um, and so over the course of my adult life that I have moved and now, you know, end up in Minnesota, I'm originally from El Paso, Texas, uh, that song has always followed me. Um, and especially as, as, as it is directly connected with a love ballad, a love story and The Little Mermaid. Um, it reminds me that uh, as as huge as a vision might be, right? Like I think the po the possibilities are endless, and it just reminds me of my childhood. Right? So that that's a little bit about why I love that song. Can you sing a little bit of it for us? Yes, I actually practiced. <gasps> yeah. Okay, I'm ready. So I'm ready. Okay. Tengo un corazón. Mutilado de esperanza y de razón. Tengo un corazón que madruga donde quiera. Ay, 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 este corazón se desnuda de impotencia ante tu voz. That's what I got. I tried. <laughs> I could sing it again. My tone was really off. I really tried. I was singing no, along with the I actual. I recognize the song. Thing. Yeah, you remember it? Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel mm -hmm. like my mom. Uh, yeah. Did you ever ha like hear from mm -hmm. like? Is un album que se llama Canciones para planchar? No. Uh -uh. Oh my God. It's like a housewives uh -uh. album of like. Okay. Like they're called okay. like Canciones para planchar y Canciones para lavar, mm -hmm. and it's like all of this kind yeah, of music yeah, yeah. that when you're ironing, da 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 da, da you know, you're uh -huh, like in uh -huh. your feelings doing the housework, and I was like, I feel like yeah. I've heard this. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Dr. Verde, thank you for your time. Yeah. This, no, your thank you. Your enthusiasm and passion is so yeah. clear to hear. And I just, oh, thank you. I wish I'd had something like Casa Sol when I started in college. Oh, because it me too. Like yeah. Such a, such a special yeah. community of people who just want you to thrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Thank you so much for the invitation. I enjoyed of it. Of course. Quisiera ser un pez para tocar mi nariz en tu pecera. Y hacer burbujas y amor por donde quiera. Oh, 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 pasar la noche en vela, mojado en ti. Uh, uh.